Hey, hello, and welcome back to the Basic Bible Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Thompson. And hey, it's been a while. We've, we took our November break. And uh, little did I know, we really needed that November break. I I spent about two weeks or so in the hospital. I'm glad to be out and recovering now. Uh, but the Lord knew what was going on uh, long before I did. And so I, I'm, I'm thankful for that. But I'm excited for another reason, not just because I'm back, but because I've got on the podcast today, friend of mine, friend of yours, Dr. Don Woodard. Don, welcome back to our podcast. It is great to be with you again. I'm very, very honored. And I, and I hope I didn't just ruin your reputation by calling you a friend. So. Oh, no, no. I'm very honored to be your friend. I, I'm very proud of you. Shot. I think you're amazing. <laughs> All right. Um, well, we are going to talk about uh, one of your latest books, and you've, you've written many books, and has been a great encouragement to me and many others, and uh, I'm looking forward to this book. Actually, I'm not looking forward to it because I've already read it, um, I'm, but I am looking forward to how God's going to use it, and that's this book right here. Uh, I'm holding this up, but of course, this is a podcast, and you're not going to see this, but uh, Life's About Relationships, A Foundation for Good Relationships. So, now if there's one thing I know about you, you are a person who loves people. Uh, probably more than any other person I know. You have a heart for others. Yeah. And I got, I'm kind of wondering, you know, what, what is it that, that drives you to just be a blessing to others? I mean, you, you can reach people that maybe other people can't. Uh, you have a tendency, I think, to, to see people as valuable, you know, images of God rather than, you know, whatever the outside persona is. And I, I'm just wondering... Uh, you know, is that something that, that God has always just kind of given you a burden for, or is that something that's developed over the years? Well, I, I don't know that I know the correct answer to that. Um, I do love people, and the best answer maybe I can give you on that is something that uh, a friend of mine who is an expert in uh, the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts, and he told me that my spiritual gift is mercy. And so most, uh, he's, his explanation is that that's, and I, I do, that's why I love people. Like the, my spiritual gift is mercy. I'm a mercy. The problem with being in mercy is you can be taken advantage of. Yeah. And that's where you have to, you need to keep people close to you that can, can detect a uh, what we might call a leech, someone that would take advantage of you, because I don't detect that. I just will, you know, I just, but because I don't know, I can't figure that out. Anyway, and that's what makes our friendship work is, you know, I'm just here for free books and you've given that to me. So, you know, that's how our relationship works. I, I'm that leech. Okay. And so I'm reaching <laughs> on to you as an author <laughs> to keep feeding me um, these books and. That's, that's just how the dynamic of our relationship works. Well, I'm a reader, and I think everyone should read, so I'm happy to get a, a book. Is my If you're going to get a gift from me, there's probably a 95% chance it's going to be a book, okay? Because I love to <laughs> I bought three books yesterday. My, um, my students know at their graduation, uh, their present will be rectangular in shape yeah. and usually <laughs> an inch or so thick. Um, that That's... Yeah, that's, that, I, that's one of the reasons we get along. So let me ask you this, uh, and this is just kind of off the top of my head, but um, it seems like that spiritual gift, you say mercy, uh, love for people, is not something a lot of people have. And, and so some of that is just God's sovereignty uh, in distributing gifts to whoever he wants and how, how he wills, and different people have different gifts. But we also know that, um, yeah, I, I love one pastor said that spiritual gifts are super gifts. In other words, everybody's commanded to have mercy. Uh, everyone's commanded to love one another. Um, but there are some who have that gift more than others. Uh, I mean, we're all commanded to give. We're all commanded uh, in, in those regards. Um, but it seems like a lot of people, especially on social media, just seem to be irritated by everybody. And mm -hmm. that's just like one of those... It, it, it's comical, but at the same time, that's a real problem because we, we are called to reflect the, the love that Christ has for us to others. So I'm wondering what advice you would give to other people who seem to struggle in that area 
we talk a lot about today about introverts and extroverts and and it seems to be the cool thing to be an introverted person who just doesn't want to be around people. But at the same time, God commands us to, to go, whether it's just preaching the gospel or loving on people. Or So what advice do you have to people that may struggle in that area? Well, you like you're saying, everybody is different. Everyone has a different spiritual gift. And uh, you are who you are. And your spiritual gift is part of your personality, I guess, is a way to look at it. And you have strengths and you have weaknesses. And uh, when we're in school, at least in the public school system, you're taught to focus on your weakness, which is a mistake. The best thing to do is focus on your strength. And so um, if you focus on your strength and you learn how to kind of control your strength, I guess you'd say, I think you become a better person. But uh, I think the big thing is to just be be thoughtful of other people and don't one of the biggest things we struggle with is ourselves. Yeah. We're our own worst enemy, you know? And so just to be selfless instead of selfish. Mm-hmm. And one of the, the things about, you know, if you look at what, what makes a good relationship, well, one of the things that makes for a good relationship is that we become selfless instead of selfish. That's not about us. It's about, well, you know, we ask ourselves a lot of times, especially young men are bad about this. OK, when they're looking for that romantic relationship, I, call, I like the word romantic relationship, I guess the word romantic um, that we look at the the person that a young man looks at this young lady he's interested in. And he asks himself the question, what can I get out of this? And the, that's not the question. The question is, what can I contribute to this? What can I what can I be to this person that I'm very interested in, maybe uh, being part of me for the rest of my life? What can I what can I give, not what can I take? And I think one of the things we need to do in our relationships is is ask ourselves that. What can I give here? What can I do to make this relationship more meaningful? What can I put into this person? Well, that's a, that's a great segue into the book. So let, let's get into okay. the book. Uh, Life's about relationships. And, you know, I was just reading through the forward and I was just blown away by it. I, I don't know. Um, I, you know, may, maybe it's it's not a, uh, an exaggeration to say the 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 forward is the is is, is worth the entire book. The price of the book. Yeah, that's right. Incredible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> whoever this author is just blew me away. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, but I, you know, uh, for those of you who haven't read it, and you need to read this, um, I, I, I was honored to write the forward to this book. And um, it's interesting. This is the first time I've ever seen my, my name in print. Eh. So I hope this doesn't drive down book sales. Well, you did but, a good job on that, by the way. Um, in, in the forward, I, I, I say that, um, you know, I'm writing this in the context of social media. And you and I were just talking about social media. You're on social media. I love, so, I love social media. And, yeah. and I'm on there. I'm on there way too much. Um, but <laughs> we, we talk about relationships. And everybody has friends on Facebook or followers on Twitter and all that stuff. And it seems to kind of like cheapen the definition of what a, what a friend is or what a relationship is. So I... I I'm going to ask you if, if, if you're wise enough to agree with me on that idea. Do, do you think that in, in this day that even the concept of relationship itself has kind of taken on a new meaning that, that needs to be addressed? Absolutely. Yeah. We're not, we're on social media, but we're not connected. You don't, just because you get on there, you know, on Facebook, Facebook's the big place I, I hang out, I guess. I, I have somebody started a, Another, I, I think a Twitter account or okay. something. I don't know. Someone did it for me because I don't know how to do it. But I, I know I'm on Facebook. I like, I like, I don't agree with some of their guidelines, of course. Right. But right. I'm on there. But just because you're on there and you're communicating with people, that a lot of people you don't even know, that doesn't mean you're connected. We're not, we're really not connected. And for example, one of the issues I have with this COVID thing, you know, People and a lot of people who have health problems, I completely understand, or yeah. elderly people with health problems, them not coming to church. But there's something about being together that right. connects us, and we're missing that. 
and COVID it, it, it ha, has hurt us in being connected. And quite honestly, I think uh, the media and politicians have used that because they to divide us. We're being divided. We're not being brought together. And because when we're divided, then we're each to control. That's my opinion. But it's um, it's kind of like uh, you know, if you ever get in trouble with the law and you have a partner in crime, so to speak, one of the first things they're going to do when they question you is they're going to separate you. Yeah. Why do they do that? So they can eat, better control you. Right. And if you've ever worked with, um, I've worked with a lot of young people and young people in detention centers and stuff, they, they separate them. They keep them apart. The reason they do that is to, con to control them. Yeah. And you you can control an individual easier than you can control a crowd. OK, so this whole thing of um, being separated, not being going in public places, we're not connected right now. We're not very connected. Social media is not the culprit in that. Thankfully, to a point with the COVID and all, social media does help us stay connected, right. but not connected the way that we should be. Well, I wouldn't even say we're connected. I would say it, it enables us to communicate, but we're not very connected. You know, I was just telling you, I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks and uh, I, I couldn't get out of the bed. Um, I was, you know, I didn't even have a good view out the window. I could <laughs> see the other side of the hospital. But, you know, I did have my phone and that was the only way I could connect with other people. And I was thankful for that. Yeah. But I was also keenly aware of this doesn't take the place of an actual uh, physical person that I can talk to. There definitely was something missing about all of that. It was a help, but it's not a replacement. Right. So I think that's why your, your book couldn't have come at a better time. Um, Cause we are, you know, we're talking about COVID, we're talking about social media um, and really it's in an age of division where I think relationships, we, we need to look at relationships more than maybe ever before. Um, and so, so the, the title of the book is life is about relationship. So maybe, um, Don, you could just kind of unpack just that, that statement. First of all, uh, a couple of things I like to tell people. One is that when you look at all the blessings you have in life, most of your blessings are connected to a relationship. And if you look at all the challenges you have in life, most of your challenges, your problems, I prefer the word challenges. Most of your challenges are connected to a relationship. Now, to go backward a little bit, uh, I grew up in a home that had a lot of challenges. I'll say it that way. And I brought a lot of that. We learn about relationships from our models and our mentors. Yeah. Okay. And when it comes to relationships in my early life, I did not have the best models. Therefore, I brought a lot of baggage with me into my marriage and into bringing up my children. OK, I had a lot of baggage and it was like over 20 years ago and I'm 61 now uh, over 20 years ago. I was in my late 30s, I guess, somewhere around there, maybe 40, early 40s. I, well, anyway, at some point I realized I had a serious anger problem. Well, anger affects your relationships. Anger's baggage. And I had things I was angry about for a really long time. And I didn't know how to process my anger. So I studied anger in the Bible. Okay. And I figured it out. All right. How to get rid of my anger. But uh, my children are grown now. All of them were together yesterday. And I love that. Everybody was here. We had a great time. My grandchildren, everybody was here. And even today, as hard as this is for me to say, I see issues or or challenges, whatever you want to call it, I'll say challenges, uh, because of things that I know that I did wrong in my relationship with my children when they were younger, but I didn't know I had bad models. And I think one of the reasons this has become so important to me and has been for five over five years now is I, I've been trying to learn from my own mistakes in relationships and learn from things I've been taught wrong. I just finished a series of, le of messages in my church. I just had three messages on this. I'm going to do a series on our, um, our Facebook page. We have a Facebook page called Life Relationships. And I'm we'll going to put a link to that in our show notes. What's that? We'll put a link to that in our show notes. Okay. And we also have a website, liferelationships.net. 
But I did this series called Your Emotional Well. Okay. There's an old country saying that says, whatever goes down in the well comes up in the bucket. Okay. And so I, I shared the idea that your emotions or you are a well. Okay. And you have all these emotions inside of you. And a lot of those emotions are based on experiences. And most of those experiences are from relationships. Okay. Like I've worked with people who, um, uh, let me, one young, one young lady I've worked with a lot. Well, she's actually older than me, but it's a long story with her. But anyway, she grew up in foster care. Okay. Was never adopted out. The day after 18th birthday, her foster parents uh, took her, loaded, put, put all of her belongings in a trash bag, took her to the police station, said, you're going to have to get out of here and go in and ask them what you're supposed to do because we don't get paid to keep you anymore, so we're not going to keep you anymore, okay? Well, when she was, uh, she was nearly starved to death when they found her when she was nine years old. She was the oldest. She had two younger siblings. She was the oldest. It was terrible. They were separated. They were never really together again. Her life was really bad. She had one foster family she lived with that for punishment made her eat out of a dog dish off the floor. Okay. So she just had all these, all these experiences that were put into her well. All right. Well, today she hates everybody. She hates God. She has nobody. She would tell you if you talk to her that, that my wife and I are the only family that she has. Okay. We live 400 miles from her. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, we just sent her a little Christmas gift. But um, she, she lives out, you live out of your emotional well, all right? And your, what's in your emotional well comes out of your life experiences. Well, I had a lot of things in my emotional well I needed to deal with. But the issue where I'm trying to make corrections today is my children who are grown live out of their emotional well. And a lot of what is in their emotional well, I put there. OK, if you read through the book of Proverbs, you'll find I think it's 32 times. It says, my son, my son, my son, listen to my instruction. My son, give me thine heart. Let thine eyes observe my ways. Uh, my son, let not sinners entice thee. Uh, so what, what is happening there is this father's trying to put good things in his son's well, his son's emotional well, put good things in. Well, when you've had a lot of bad things put in your emotional well, more bad things than good things, you're going to have a lot of issues in life that, quite honestly, medication can't solve, okay? So if you have issues in life because of bad relationships, the best thing to do is the best healer for that is good relationships. And of course, the best relationship is our relationship with Christ. Right. So if you have had bad relationship experiences, then what you need is good relationship experiences. And what I try to do now is uh, quietly, subtly, whatever word you want to use, I try to, to put in my children in, in that emotional well good things. Yeah. Because I know in the past, <clears throat> because of anger problems I had and other issues I had, because I had bad models that I, I'm not, I, I take the responsibility, but I didn't know any better. Okay. So I, I have to take responsibility, especially for my early on, when my wife and I first got married and started having children early on, I made a lot of mistakes. I didn't know what to do. Okay. And so I know that I put bad emotions in their emotional well. It, then that was the, in my, through my relationship with them. So now I'm just, all I can do is work on putting good in their emotional well, okay? So, but it's, this started out with the idea, so I heard someone make the statement that most of your problems in life are connected to a relationship, and that just, like, changed. i would always loved studying relationships, but when I heard that statement over five years ago, I began constantly, every day, this morning, I'm, I was writing a lesson on relationships. I'm working on, it'd be like a two part lesson. I'll have on our Facebook uh, page. I'm calling it um, uh, making, I, I have my notes here somewhere. Hang on a minute. I have my, uh, yeah. Making relationships more meaningful in 2022. And there's two things I'm going to share that you can do to make your relationships more meaningful in 2022. Okay. In the book, uh, you 
show us the relationship of Adam and Eve. Yes. And that's kind of the basis um, that the rest of the book is built upon. Um, why did you choose Adam and Eve and, and how do they relate to us today? Well, I love that. Okay. You, now you, I may never stop talking. Okay. <laughs> first of all, we find in the book of Genesis, the first relationships, we find that, that God created man for the purpose of a relationship. Okay. And we learned there's so many, when I started this, I have a little notebook here that I have like 78 pages of thoughts all about relationships from when I first started studying it over five years ago, that uh, 78 pages of just thoughts on relationships, all from the first four chapters of Genesis, hmm. okay? Because there's so much in there. First, God created man for the purpose of a relationship. And then he saw that the man was alone. It wasn't good for the man to be alone. So then God created the woman. He created the woman from the man. And uh, there's a lot of, of applications in that in marriage, by the way. Um, and then uh, the, the, there was an intruder, which was this, the serpent. Okay? Satan described it as, uh, uh, I believe, um, possessed the body of a serpent. But he, uh, he was an intruder. He intruded in the relationship. Well, when do we have problems in relationships? Like if there's a big problem in a marriage, a lot of times it's because there's somewhere there's an intruder, okay? And the intruder's telling us something's not true. Now, it may not be where it's a, uh, a physical relationship or anything, but just someone on the outside that, you know, even if it's someone that's telling, you know, telling a man, a, a work friend or whatever, telling a man, you know, you don't, you know, you don't, you don't need to do everything your wife says, you know, or telling a woman, you don't need to do anything your husband says, you know, anything that's an intrusion that's causing a problem in the marriage. So there was an intrusion. So anyway, there's just, that's just, you know, then they, when in the fall, the most fascinating thing to me is that Adam and Eve, and I, she's a woman, by the way, her name is a woman until right before they put out a garden. That fascinates me. Yeah. But uh, they trespassed against God. God didn't trespass against them. Yet it was God that came seeking reconciliation. Wasn't, wasn't Adam that went to God. It was God that came to man. God's always came to man. But the, there's a principle there in relationships. If we have an issue, it doesn't matter so much who's wrong or who's right. It matters. The person matters. It's the person. And if, if I've wronged that person or they've wronged me, and let's say they've wronged me, that person's more important to me than what they've done. So I should go to that person to seek reconciliation. A great example of that, and here's something that we've missed in our churches. We've missed this big time, especially in a crowd that I kind of used to run with, you might say, okay, that the prodigal son, all right? It's interesting to me that when here's this son, and I believe the prodigal son, I don't believe it's a parable. I believe it really happened. It doesn't specifically say that that's a parable, by the way. If you read it carefully, it doesn't say that part's a parable. Okay. But the, the prodigal son went out and wasted his inheritance. Right. He came back. He was in the pig pen. He was filthy, dirty. And the father ran and fell on his son's neck and kissed him. And the, the other brother got angry. You know, why are you doing this? You're celebrating, you know. Our, your, my brother went out, he wasted, he threw away your inheritance you gave him, and he spent it on wine, women, and song, and you're celebrating, you know, because he came back. Well, why was that? The reason the father celebrated was because the son, don't miss this, the son was worth more to the father than the inheritance he'd wasted. Yeah. See, we overlook the value of the person, mm. and we do that in the church. We overlook the value of the person. The person messed up, and a lot of times we don't give them a chance to even get get their heart right. We don't give them the chance to to wake up, or, or as it says in Scripture, you know that the prodigal he came to himself. We don't even give them a chance to come to themselves. We just throw them away and we destroy them, and we start periodicals and we get on social media and we talk bad about them. And we don't see the person, the the value of the person. The reason Adam, the reason that God came to Adam and Eve after they fell was because God saw the value of the person. God saw the value of Adam and God saw the value of Eve. 
And we miss that. And if we don't value the people that are in our lives, then we're not going to try to restore them when they fall. Wow. I am. Uh, I've got to say that that is I'm writing that down as you're talking. Um, that is incredibly convicting to me. And that's something that kind of the value of the person is worth more than the value of the inheritance is lost. Um, well, look at know, the that, 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 that can transform entire relationships right there. That's just that idea. That could change our churches. Yeah. It could look at the look at the people that we've thrown away. And you know, you without going into specifics, you know what I'm talking about. We've destroyed people. We've right. thrown people away. Right. Because what you know, what we were trying to build was more important than the person. Well, yeah. we're not yeah. supposed to be trying to God's said I'll build Jesus said I'll build my church. Okay. <laughs> it's building yeah. it. It's not about us. It's right. not about you being written up in a magazine because of what something you've done. It's about the glory of God. It's and, and God is all about restoration. He's yeah. all about the person. He's not about the 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 material things, so to speak. It's about the person. Yeah, you know, I, I'm you know thinking of a personal conflict I'm going through right now, and that just hit me. That just really you know um, convicted my my soul. You know, we complain a lot, I, all of us, as, you know, I don't think it's going to surprise anybody to know that I'm a conservative politically. Um, <laughs> and, no. and uh, you know, and I know, Don, you are as well. And we mm-hmm. complain a lot about cancel culture, uh, but yeah. that's just not out there. That, that's in here as well. That's, that's within the church. That's within um, our, our, our good Bible-believing churches as well. And it's um, so big in the world because we've allowed it in the church. Yeah. You know, this is a, yeah, buy this book. Um, you need this book. I, I'm just realizing we're running out of time and I didn't even get to half the questions we've got here. So um, you, you'll want to get this book again. The book is Life's About Relationships, A Foundation for Good Relationships by Dr. Don Woodard. And, um, again, the foreword written by Kevin Thompson. So you don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this. Um, we're going to have this on our website. You can purchase that. Um, liferelationships.net. You can look at that as well. And of course, um, uh, the Facebook group. Um, so uh, you want to check that out, and I'll have the, all, all, all the links to that. Um, Brother Don, I want to thank you for taking the time and joining us here today. I know you've got a family, you had a house full of family today, and I don't want to take you away from that any more than I, than I need to. But uh, thank you for uh, your book, your ministry, and, and really your friendship as well. Well, thank you, my brother. I'm going to come out to Wisconsin sometime and see you. Absolutely. We need to do that. Um, All right. I'll have you come and preach chapel for us, talk to our students. I know they've, they've enjoyed your, your chapel messages in the past virtually. Um, but anyway, so thank you very much. Thank all of you guys for, for tuning in and uh, join us back next week, and we'll have another great program for you. So until then, check out our website at www.basicbiblepodcast.org. Check us out on Facebook. Um, also, we're on Twitter and Instagram at Basic Bible Cast. So until next week, have a good rest of your week.